to the Messy Reformation. My name's Jason Rice. I'm the lead pastor at Faith Community CRC in Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. My co-host is Willie Kroenke. He's a member at PCRC in Pease, Minnesota. We're just a couple of guys who love the Christian Reformed Church and want to see Reformation happen in our denomination. And we realize that whenever Reformation happens, things get messy. And the closer we get to this upcoming synod, the messier things are getting. So we're taking the opportunity to have conversations with pastors throughout the Christian Reformed Church to find out what's going on in our denomination, but also to talk about what Reformation might look like. If you haven't already, take a moment, click subscribe so you don't miss any of our upcoming content. We are dropping episodes every single Monday. We're also dropping a new series of episodes helping people prepare for Synod with me, and those are dropping every Thursday. Don't miss them. We also want to say thank you to all those who've supported us on Patreon. We're slowly working our way toward our modest goal of 20 supporters at $5 a month. So if you appreciate what we're doing and want to help us put out content, head on over to patreon.com backslash the messy reformation. With all that said, we're going to get to this week's episode where you get to hear me share some thoughts on this upcoming gathering of Synod. Well, we're doing things a little differently this week because we have one odd week. We have two more interviews that will be published before Synod, but we had one extra week. So I decided to take the opportunity to to share some things that have been on my heart as I've been doing my devotions, but also as I've been preparing for this upcoming Synodical Gathering. And one of the things that has repeatedly come up in my devotions recently is this idea of fear. But in particular the fear of the Pharisees. As you read through the Gospels and you see the reasoning behind many of the Pharisees' actions was fear. And and in particular, they feared the the people. And so in Matthew 21, uh, verses 45 and 46, we read, When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they perceived that he was speaking about them. And although they were seeking to arrest him, They feared the crowds because they held him to be a prophet, right? So they feared the crowds. And then Mark 11, verse 18, it says, And the chief priests and the scribes heard it, were seeking a way to destroy him, for they feared him, because all the crowd was astonished at his teaching. Or even in Luke 22, 1 through 2, says, Now the feast of unleavened bread drew near, which is called the Passover, And the chief priests and the scribes were seeking to put him to death, for they feared the people. And so there seems to be this repeated reference throughout the Gospels in multiple places that the Pharisees were seeking to kill Jesus because they were afraid of him and they were afraid of the people. And I wanted to take an opportunity to just encourage all of us, but especially those who are going to be delegates at this upcoming synod, not to give into this pharisaical fear, but to stand firm and to be courageous as you prepare, but even as we enter into the synodical gathering. I want you to follow the Apostle Paul's words from 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, be strong. And it's been funny because recently, I had a conversation with someone who seemed to insinuate they thought I was some rough, tough guy who never experienced fear, which is funny because it's so far from the truth. I mean, often when I'm speaking up in a group full of people, I'm trembling, I'm shaking, I've got butterflies in my stomach. I'm afraid, I'm I'm fearing the, the people, but I speak anyways because God has commanded me to speak. And I speak because I fear God more than I fear the people that I'm speaking to. And some of this has just come out of my, my own history that I had this gathering early on in my ministry. Our church had a gathering to discuss a pretty contentious topic. And I had just been hired as a youth pastor. I was maybe a youth pastor for one or two years. And we had a congregational meeting and, and people were talking about this topic and and I really didn't like how the conversation was going. I thought it wasn't very helpful, but I did not speak because I was afraid. 
I was afraid that that it was going to hurt my position. I was afraid that I was going to cause damage to some relationships. I was afraid of numerous things, and so I kept quiet. And, and I remember driving home after that meeting, completely cut to the heart, that I would never, ever do that again. I would never keep my mouth shut because I was afraid of the people and not fear God enough to speak up and speak the truth. And I think that's what courage is. Uh, Courage is actually fearing God more than you fear mankind or more than you fear other people. It's, It's knowing that people will be angry and disdainful and maybe look down on you and actually even feeling the weight of that deep down in your soul, but moving forward anyways and even speaking the truth when you need to speak the truth. And entering into battles, we need to enter into battles because you fear God more than you fear men. That's really what courage is. If you talk to numerous people, uh, soldiers and, and leaders who've led through difficult times, they, they will say courage is not actually being unafraid. It's actually acknowledging your fear, but then moving forward anyway. And that's what courage is going to look like as we approach this upcoming synod. I really want these words ringing through your head as we approach this upcoming synod. Fear God more than you fear men. Fear God more than you fear men. Because I know, I'm already hearing it as we approach this synod, we are going to hear more and more talk that sounds very much like this pharisaical fear. We're already hearing people saying, we need to fear what this is going to do to the people. We need to fear the damage this is going to do to some people. We need to fear the disunity of the church. We need to fear that we're going to make a rash decision. And I just keep hearing fear, 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 fear. And all that sounds like Pharisee talk to me. And I want you to remember, fear God, not men. We must make sure that we don't allow fear to cause us to delay action as well. Um, This has been the, the repeated thing that I've heard coming out of the denomination and a lot of other people saying, we need to be afraid of what this is going to do, so we shouldn't do anything. We don't want to make a rash decision that's going to hurt a bunch of people and cause disunity in the church. But let me, let me be clear that, that this is actually just a, a tactic, a, a delay tactic. But, but delay tactics are actually what, how smaller armies always defeat larger armies, right? We've seen this as a, throughout history that when a, a smaller army, when a minority is, is trying to defeat a majority they use delay tactics. They, they stretch out the field of battle. They stretch out the time frame in order to win. I mean, that's literally how the United States became a country. We were a smaller army than Britain. They had more power, more men, and yet we won because we stretched out the battle. We stretched out the time frame and we won. And again, we're hearing this repeatedly coming up to this upcoming synod. Don't make a decision now. Stretch things out further. Wait, wait, wait. And I'm telling you, I'm I'm fairly certain that this is happening because they know that the majority of the people in our denomination are holding orthodox views regarding sexuality. The vast majority of the people, if you're counting everybody in the pew, the vast majority are orthodox on this position. And so they're saying, stretch it out, stretch it out. Wait, 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 wait. And the main reason I'm hearing telling us we need to keep waiting is fear, 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 fear. Fear damage, fear disunity, fear making a rash decision. And I'm encouraging us not to bow into that pharisaical fear, but but actually to move forward with a Christ-like biblical courage. 
you know, I've, I've used this quote before, and actually I think Derek Bukema was the first one I heard it from, that this G.K. Chesterton quote that says, a soldier doesn't fight because he hates those in front of him, but because he loves those behind him. And I think that's right, but, but actually I want to modify that quote a little bit. A soldier fights not because he hates those in front of him, but because he loves those behind him, and he loves what he sees on the other side of the battle. He loves the peace that he sees on the other side of the battle. He loves the vision of the future that he sees on the other side of the battle. And and I'm wanting to encourage us that as we we kind of dread and fear and maybe are even overwhelmed coming up to this synodical battle, and I think everybody recognizes, even if they don't want to use the language of battle, everybody recognizes it's going to be a battle. And as we look forward to that, and we see this battle coming up on the horizon. I want us to fight, not because we hate the people in front of us and hate the people we disagree with. I want us to fight because we love the people in our pews. We love the people God has called us to serve. And we love the vision of what's on the other side of the battle. I mean, I long for the day when I can be part of a a denomination that I'm proud of and not ashamed of. We used to be that denomination, but we're no longer that denomination. And I long for the day when we will be that denomination. I long for the day when we will be a denomination that's known for standing firm and not just collapsing under pressure. I mean, I long for the day when our denomination will have such a passion and commitment to God's word and God's people that we will discipline anyone who's teaching a false doctrine and leading God's people into destruction. I long for that day. I mean, I long for the day when I can be excited about people going to Calvin University and Calvin Seminary. I long for the day when our denomination will hire exciting people for our denominational positions and stop seeking out the most bland, non-controversial candidates. I long for the day when our denomination is going to be more focused on the possibilities of the future and stop dwelling on all of the failures of our past. And lately, as I'm looking forward to this upcoming synod and thinking about the future, I long for the day when people are going to ask us to tell the story of how Reformation happened in the CRC. I long for that day when I can talk to my kids and say, this is what happened. This is what God did to bring Reformation in our denomination. And I can tell you that even as I say that, I feel my heart catching on fire and I feel strength coming into my bones and I feel boldness welling up within me. Why? Not because I hate the people in front of me. No, because I love the people in my pew, the people of my church, and I love the vision I see on the other side of this battle of being part of a denomination that loves God, loves his word, loves his people, and stands firm in that truth. That's what gives me strength and courage to keep moving forward. That's what gives me strength and courage to speak boldly, even when my legs are shaking and my heart is pounding. That's what gives me strength and courage to just kind of keep pushing forward and keep preparing for this battle, reading a thousand pages of agenda material and and all of the other stuff that's going into this. I keep doing that because I love my God, I love my flock, and I love the vision for what I see on the other side of this battle. And ultimately, we need to remember that we find strength in all of these things, but ultimately, our strength and our courage come from the Lord. Um, it's not really about us. We can't, look deep enough, we can't look deep enough within ourselves to well up enough strength and courage to fight this battle. Uh, courage actually only comes through faith. I love this line from the Apostle Paul from 1 Corinthians fifteen ten. He said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them. Yet not I, 
but the grace of God that was with me. See, even Paul knew. He said, I worked harder than everyone. I fought harder than anyone. I I pressed on in the midst of difficulty and challenge. But really, it wasn't me. It was the grace of God within me. And ultimately, he's talking about the grace of God that comes through faith. It was his faith that allowed him to work harder than all of them. And so it's by faith in in the triune God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit that we find courage and strength to, to enter into this battle. I mean, it's by faith that we keep moving forward when all of the odds are stacked against us. And it's by faith that we stand up and we speak boldly, even when our legs are shaking. And even when we don't quite know what to say, we still speak because God has promised he will give us the words to speak in that moment. And it's by faith that we enter into this upcoming synod, trusting that our God is still on his throne, he is leading his people, he will accomplish his will, and he will work through us. And I want to end by just adapting Acts 20, 22 through 24 to our current circumstances. And, you know, I want to encourage you, go read Acts 20 and read Paul's final letter to the elders from Ephesus. It's probably my favorite passage of scripture, but this one portion has always just struck me deep, deep within my heart. And so I want to change it. I want to take this and apply it to our current situation, but go read it in its proper context. But here it is applied to our current situation. And now behold, we are going to synod, constrained by the Spirit, not knowing what will happen to us there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to us that difficulty and affliction await us along the way. But let us not account our lives of any value, nor as precious to ourselves, if only we may finish our course in the ministry that we receive from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. Amen. That's all we have for this week. Stay tuned next week for part one of our conversation with Dirk Kochia, if that's how you say his name. Tune in next week to find out how to really say his name. Until then, don't forget this is Christ Church, and he bought it with his blood. And we've been warned that wolves will come in trying to destroy the flock. So keep a close watch on your life and on your doctrine. For each the word in season and out of season. And keep fighting the good fight in this messy reformation. <laughs>